keep it brief. So I'm in Mexico. I am facilitating some women's retreats this winter and I'm in between retreats right now. And I had a deep calling that I needed something for myself to nourish myself. Holding space can sometimes um, not, not be challenging, but it can take up a lot of uh, my inner resources. And it's really important for me as all of us, when we hold a lot of space to take time to nurture ourselves and hold space for ourselves. So I had this calling to go to the mountains, which didn't make sense to me because I'm in the heat. I'm by the ocean. I have a place rented for the entire winter, but there was a deep yearning in me to go to the mountains. And if I think back, I've actually been being called to the mountains for a few months now. And so I decided to follow that intuition, and as synchronicity lined up, I found a place that was um, a refuge of sorts where there was yoga, meditation, some vegan food, nice cabanas, and um, it just felt right. And so I booked my space, and I paid my money, and then after I committed, all my fears rose up. So... I thought, oh, I shouldn't have probably spent that money on myself. For one thing, I've already have accommodations here. Why did I do that? So that was one. My scarcity mindset came in. This is crazy. I'm a woman on my own traveling in Mexico, three and a half hours in a bus up the mountains. I've never been there before. I don't know what to expect. So fear of the unknown, not being able to control my environment and my circumstances came in very loud. Um, Language was also part of it, which is also, you know, not trusting myself. Uh, my, my Spanish is pretty good, but when I was going up here, I knew there would be very, there would be less and less English. So it was, I was hitting my own growth edge. I could feel I was hitting my growth edge and I almost canceled a few times and something inside me said, no, you need to go there. And so I listened to that voice that I needed to go there and I stopped making concrete plans. I was just allowing myself to be guided, um, to, to the experience. And so I needed to get a bus, but I, the place where the bus was going to pick me up was a half an hour from where I lived. So I was trying to figure out how I would get a bus uh, or how I would get to the bus. And then um, a friend reached out. She was going to the town to go to the market day. I could get a ride. So again, I let go of all time, all schedules. I didn't look at what the timing was for the bus schedule. I, I just I I decided to become in the flow and let my heart guide me and to trust the guidance that was happening around me. So Guy dropped me off at the bus station. I went in um, there. I had, I got my spot. The bus was leaving in 15 minutes. So synchronistically I was there in perfect time. The bus seat that I, uh, that they gave me was seat number eight, which is my life path number. I'm an eight. So that was confirmation from my higher self and from the divine that I was, I was on, I was on the right bus. I was doing the right thing. I sat down, a gentleman came and sat beside me. Um, I instantly had a judgment about him. I was like, oh, he looks like, um, sort of like a partier. (laughs) And so I had this judgment come in of like, oh, this might be an uncomfortable bus ride. I'm not sure if he's my vibe. So my, my inner judgment went off there decided to let that go and I started speaking to him in Spanish and then we were conversing and then he said something that I didn't understand and I responded in English and then he said, oh, I speak English too. I'm from uh, the U.S. So then we started speaking in English and having this conversation. He told me his name, uh, which was Azul, which means blue, which was a very, another very significant sign for me, um, which I don't need to get into, but it was a big sign. And it turns out he was going to the exact same place I was going in San Jose del Pacifico that is a totally obscure place. It's like off the beaten track. It's like in the middle of the jungle, in the mountains. He's going to the same place. And what does he say to me? I'll get you there safely. Instantly, my whole nervous system relaxed. I thought, wow, I am really being guided here. So I started to feel that excitement of like, what's next? So I had downloaded a couple of books for my journey. And um, one was Return to Love by Marion Williamson, which we spoke about here in um, all about the Course in Miracles. So I was going to listen to that on my journey. And then by default, I chose another book, which was The Bringers of the Dawn by Barbara Marciniak, which is a channeled uh, message from the 80s, um, all about the Pleiadians and their mission in life. And so I downloaded two books. It was perfect. I went to look for the Marion Williamson book, and it didn't download. The only book that downloaded was Bringers of the Dawn. So I thought, okay, I guess I'm listening to Bringers of the Dawn. Start listening to it. 
everything starts lining up about my personal mission in life. I, I remembered all, all of these different things of like, you know, what I'm excited about and how I'm excited to share them and, you know, what I'm here to anchor on this planet. So I was feeling really, really good. Uh, in the in the audiobook, she's talking a lot about pyramids and spheres and the significance of the pyramid. And so I was really paying attention to this. She was talking about our 12 strand DNA, super up my alley, really into it. Arrive at my destination, walk in to the refuge. The first thing I see is a pyramid. <laughs> I look around, there's pyramids everywhere with spheres on top. So I'd just been learning about the significance of pyramids with spheres. And all of a sudden I'm in a complete retreat center that is based on the pyramid and the sphere. Everywhere I look, it's based on this structure. So again, I'm like, okay, thank you. I'm in the right place at the right time. It's all flowing perfectly. I go into the common area. There's a book. Um, the book is called The Pyramid of Life. I'm like, oh my gosh, like it was a free copy, uh, like in their lending library. I started to read it pretty much right away. Everything was like confirming everything that I had just listened to in the other audiobook, everything that I've been diving into in my own personal study. So I'm deep in this book, and um, there's a couple of cats at the refuge. I love cats. Cats are like my spirit animal. I love them so much. My cat died a couple of years ago, and I've just wanted a cat so badly. And so the two cats come over. One hops on my knee, and I realize she's pregnant. I can feel her babies moving on my legs. She sat on my knee for basically two days straight while I read this book, um, and I really bonded with her. And on that second day, I had this feeling that she was going to go into labor. Um, it was like an intuitive hit. And I saw four babies. And I was like, okay, she's going to go into labor tonight. I, I can feel that. Didn't think anything much about it except for this is her time. At the end of day two, after I'd spent all this time reading with this cat, um, I'm going to my room at night. I just had a very beautiful conversation with two other people that were there about following your heart and all of these things. And we had some beautiful exchanges. And I'm walking back to my room and I leave my door open because I'm lighting my fire. And all of a sudden I look behind me and in comes the pregnant cat. Now this is quite a walk from where the common space is. I've never even seen the cat or the cats up where the cabanas are. So I looked at her and I instantly knew, okay, we're doing this. She's here to give birth. So I have two beds in my room. I clear off one of the beds with all of my stuff. I'm packing it in my bag. I create space for her. I get the fire going. I light some candles. I light some copal, which is the um, sacred smudge here of these lands. And she comes and lays with me on my bed. So I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm just going to hold the space if this is what's going to happen. And she laid with me for a little bit, purring, laying on me. I'm petting her. And then all of a sudden I could feel her belly starting to contract. So I was like, okay, I don't want this happening on my bed. I, I want it on the other bed. So I pick her up. I put her over there. I create a nice nest for her. And then all this fear starts coming in. I don't know what I'm doing. What if she needs help and I'm not capable? What if one of the babies dies? What if, what if, what if? All these things. I had a thought that I should take her outside. Like she should be in nature. I, I can't be around this. And then as I was pacing my room, this voice came in and this knowing of, trust her, trust life. And this shift happened instantly. And all of a sudden I was like, right, like, who am I to say what she needs, what she doesn't need? She knows what she needs. She came here for a reason. If she wasn't meant to be here, if I wasn't meant to be witness to this, she wouldn't be here in my room right now. There's all kinds of rooms everywhere. She chose this room. She trusts me. I need to trust her. I want to trust her. So I go over to her, I sit, I'm petting her head, she's praying that I go back to my bed and she keeps coming over to where I am and I'm like, this is really weird because usually when a cat or animals, wild animals are going into birth, they want to be on their own, they don't want humans around. But I realized that she wanted me near her. Um, I work with birth at home with humans, I've been to a lot of human birth, so I was like, okay, I guess she wants me to be her doula. So as soon as I went and sat beside her and I pet her head, the first baby came out. And I'm just in shivers even thinking about it. So over the next four hours, four babies were born. Um, they all came in. They're all perfectly healthy. She was such a good mama. She took care of the situation so well. And I held space for her the whole time. I kept smudging. The candles were going. It was actually like the perfect birth situation. Um, and then after the babies came, 
Um, I moved them all to my bed so that I could be there in case she needed me in the night, a classic mama move. And, um, <laughs> and so I was able to be part of this humbling, beautiful experience where I, I learned so much about myself, about trusting life, about trusting our innate wildness, because really that, that birthing process, if we think about it, we're all in a birthing process right now in this container. We're birthing this new part of ourselves. And when fears come up and we start to question it, then we're doubting our ability to be able to rebirth this version of ourselves. We're getting caught up in the stories that we've told ourselves that we're not, it's not capable or, or we need human intervention, which means we need our ego to intervene. So I was able to really zoom out and observe the situation. And I'm telling you, it was the biggest heart opening experience that I've had for a very long time. It was a huge initiation. And um, as, as I was planning my trip up there to the mountains, I was very certain, uh, like there's a person there that has a message for me. So I'm looking for this person. So I'm, I'm looking for this person that's going to be a teacher. And I had no idea it was going to be a cat and it's going to be animals and it was going to be babies. <laughs> And um, as Jaden mentioned in our integration call today, one of my biggest dreams has been for years for a pregnant cat to come to my doorstep <laughs> and deliver babies and need my help. I don't even know why. And, um, and what he was saying today is, you know, as I allowed myself to follow my heart to this destination, my heart's desire came true. And um, it was just miraculous and beautiful and will alter me, you know, forever. Uh, I got to spend three full days with these babies and their mom in my bed and um, got to be part of that. And to finish the story, um, the last part of the story is um, the person who was going to take over being the guardian after I left. She's the manager there and she came to check in on them one day and she told me that um, the mama's cat's name was Corazon, which is Spanish for heart. And um, it was just all so perfect. So... That's my story of following my heart's desire and the magic that unfolded and the deep expansion and rebirth that it unfolded for me too. Um, it's literally going to be something that has changed my life um, in the most beautiful way. So I appreciate your time for listening to that story. Uh, hopefully it didn't drag on too much, but I appreciate it. And uh, have fun this week. Be playful with your heart. Be playful with yourself. Allow the human to do what the human wants to do, but don't let it get in the way. Um, this is such a beautiful journey, this life journey that, we, that we're here on right now. And we're really here to anchor love. That's who we are. So let's just really commit to do that. And it all starts with listening to our heart. So have fun. And I look forward to hearing about your experiences. Sending you all love.